Max? Thank you. So, let's look at this. So let's first talk about, in chapter 5, we're going to be continuing to talk about triangles. I kind of said that before. We're going to be continuing to talk about triangles. So, in this one, we're going to be talking about a lot of different properties of triangles and these different lines that are going to develop from them and talk about them and what they do. So, the first one we're going to talk about is our perpendicular bisectors. What's perpendicular mean? Like this. Like this. Intersected okay. form. Intersected form. Right, right angles. Degrees. Right angles, which are 90 degrees, okay? Bisector. What's a bisector mean? Cuts it in half. Cuts it in half, okay? So the perpendicular bisector is going to be a segment, ray, line, or plane that is perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. It's perpendicular to a segment at its midpoint. Midpoint is the middle of a segment. <laughs> so it cuts the segment into two congruent parts. It cuts the segment into two congruent parts there. If it, if it cuts it in half, if it goes through the midpoint, then sorry, but I can't read backwards. If it cuts it in half, then it's going to be cutting it into two congruent parts. So in this example, if we look over here, as soon as my toolbar kind of goes off the side, line PC, line PC <laughs> is the perpendicular bisector. It's perpendicular and it bisects what? AB. This is the segment AB. Remember, lines or rays cannot be cut in half because they go on forever. There's no half to them. They just go on forever. Does that kind of make sense if you look at this picture that PC, line PC, would be the perpendicular bisector of segment AB? Can you do that? Like if they never intersect? Yeah, which one's never intersecting? The parallel one. And they can't find that either. They even make it up. I know. So we have this perpendicular bisector theorem. Because in geometry, we have all sorts of theorems. Everything we learn about basic has a theorem like this. So we have this perpendicular bisector theorem. If a point is on a, the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is what we call equidistant. <coughs> equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment, okay? So if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the two endpoints of that segment. So if we have the same thing here, line PC bisecting, being perpendicular bisector to a segment AB, now we just added it at point X. Scratch that. Ignore that part. Okay. We have this down here. It's basically the same thing as this drawing. Except for instead of G, what's this say? Or instead of P, it says D down here, right? Unless you almost learned that after, like you forget. Oh. So we're saying a point C, which is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, we're saying CD, line CD, is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Then point C, which is on this perpendicular bisector, is going to be equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment. So the endpoints of the segment are A and B. Since C is on the perpendicular bisector, the distance from A to C is going to be the same as the distance from C to B. So it's dash to kind of show the distance there. Dash to show the distance here. And we put two marks here and two marks here to show that they're congruent. Other. And this could work anywhere. So you could put a point in, you could put a point here. It's still on the perpendicular bisector. Say I want to call this point F. This point F is going to be equidistant from the two endpoints as well. And say this kept going forever and ever and ever down here, and it's still the perpendicular bisector, I could have point W, and it would be equidistant from these two endpoints as well. So you could just have infinitely many points on the perpendicular bisector that would be equidistant from those. You don't have to draw in all those extra marks. Yeah, 
and you know, mm-hmm. Brown always likes the ones. Okay, so that's what we need to be read more and more examples of that. Now, what kind of form was this perpendicular bisector in? We see the word it and then, so it's an it then form. Okay, we're going to train our eyes to continue to look for this if then form. If it's an if then form, what do you think we might be able to do? Make a statement. Okay, it's in a statement. What can we do now on top of that? It's already in an if-then statement. What have we been able to do when we had if-then? Converse it. Make the converse and flip it around. Okay, I saw a sentence flip around, converse, okay? So we can have the converse. Mm-hmm. Perpendicular bisector, converse. So in the original, we had it's a point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment. Then it's equidistant, which means same distance, it's equal distance from the two endpoints. Converse, if a point is equal distance from the endpoints, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So go ahead and fill that in. We'll talk about this briefly, and then we'll be done after we talk about it. So we're not quite done. Don't quite put away things yet. I'll be right here. Keep going. One more thing to write on this point. We'll talk about that. So this is going to be reverse order. The first one said, hey, if something's on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it's equidistant from those endpoints. This is saying the opposite way. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints, so here, point X is equidistant from the endpoints A and B of the segment AB, so it has to lie on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So it says XA, the distance from the point and the segment is equal to segment XB, this is from the point B and the segment, then the point X that we've been talking about is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment AB. After you write in segment AB, you guys can feel free to catch up. We'll talk about this more on Friday. Okay, when's that homework going to be due, that 4 8 homework? Next week, next class, which is Friday. Thank you.